In this video we're going to look at the particle in a slanted box model system as an example of how to use the linear variational method. So the particle in a slanted box is very similar to the particle in a box except for inside our well here inside the box the potential energy is not going to be zero all the way across it's going to be this linear function in green v naught x over l. So we're going to start at v equals zero at x equals zero here and then gradually slope all the way up to v equals v naught at x equals l. And we're going to have a trial function here, which is a linear combination of two basis functions. So we have two variational parameters, c1 and c2. Our energy is going to be a minimum with respect to those, the value of those parameters there. And the natural choice for what would be these two basis functions are the first two eigenfunctions of the particle in a box for phi1 and phi2. Now these are not exact eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian here, but they are going to be a pretty good approximation to uh, what will be the ground state energy here when we take uh, this minimum energy linear combination down here. So the things that we need, we need our overlap matrix, our S matrix, and this has elements Sij which look like phi star i times phi j integrated over the entire range of the function. And we know that these two basis functions, being eigenfunctions of the particle in a box Hamiltonian, are orthonormal. So they are normalized from these normalization coefficients, and they are orthogonal to each other. So that makes this S matrix just an identity matrix. All the elements are a chronic or delta. 1 if, if i equals j, and 0 if i does not equal j. For our Hamiltonian matrix, we're going to have four elements again. Uh, those will all be the integral from 0 to L with respect to x of phi star i, Hamiltonian acting on phi j. Our Hamiltonian is just the kinetic energy operator, minus h bar squared over 2m. Uh, second derivative with respect to x, this function is only one dimensional and it's only in x, plus our potential energy v naught x over l. Then we know for the special case of a trial function, which is a linear combination of two basis functions which are orthonormal to each other, thus having a, an identity matrix for the S matrix. We derived in the previous video that the energy we're going to have is this expression down here in terms of the Hamiltonian matrix elements. So we need to get what these three unique Hamiltonian matrix elements are. So let's get started with that now. Okay, first of all we're going to have H11. It's going to be 1 star H1. And we can separate that into the kinetic energy operator acting on it and the expectation of the potential energy operator acting on state one. But then there's a simplification we can make here. If we take just the kinetic energy part, that's the particle in a box Hamiltonian. If there's no potential energy, that's the particle in a box a Hamiltonian, and this first function here is a particle in a box eigenfunction. So this kinetic energy here is the total Hamiltonian, thus it will, this integral will give us the total energy for this first state of the particle in a box. So what this is going to give us is this value epsilon, which I've defined here, which is going to be the units I'll have for the particle in a box system. Um, we know the particle in a box energies are n squared h squared over 8 ml squared. For n equals 1, your energy is h squared over 8 ml squared. So I'm going to call this value epsilon just so I don't have to keep writing this over and over again. Okay, so that gives me that h11 is going to be epsilon plus then this potential integral. There are some things I can pull out of it first. Um, we know that there's going to be, on the 1 star here, there's going to be a square root of 2 over L. On the 1, there's going to be a square root of 2 over L. So I can pull out a 2 over L to begin with. We know on the potential energy operator, we have two constants, the V naught over L. So I can pull those out. Those are just constants. Then within the integral, we have integral 0 to L dx. The operator is just a multiplicative operator, so it's just multiplying times x. So I can actually pull the, size, the phi star and phi together, and I can have 
x times sine squared pi x over L. Okay, and then the value of this integral, which I'm highlighting in yellow there, if I just write what that what the value of this integral ends up evaluating out to, that is going to be L squared over four. So if I replace this integral with L squared over four, then I've got an L squared here and two L's in the denominator here. So I'll cross those out. And I've got a two up here and a four down here. So I'll be left with a two in my denominator and cross that out up there. So our final result for H11 is that H11 is going to equal epsilon plus, and the only thing we're left with is V naught over two. Okay, that's our first matrix element. Then we're gonna move over here. If we look at H22, we'll similarly have <coughs> the two star T2 integral and the two V2 integral. We know that this basis function two is also an eigenfunction of the particle in a box Hamiltonian, which is just this kinetic energy part. And that's this kinetic energy integral here, which is the total energy for a particle in a box with no potential. And for the second state, the energy of that is going to be four epsilon. It's going to be two squared h squared over eight ml squared. So that's four epsilon as I've defined it here. So then my next line here, I have h22 equals four epsilon plus Similarly, I'm going to pull out two factors of square root of 2 over L. I'm going to get a 2 over L for this integral here. I'm going to pull out a factor of V naught over L. Then I have the integral from 0 to L dx x sine squared 2 pi x over L. Okay. And similarly, this integral is also going to evaluate out to L squared over four. So just like I had in the first integral, I'm gonna have this L and this L cancel with this L squared. This two is gonna cancel with this four to give me a two. And the final result I get for H22 is that I have four epsilon plus V naught over two. Okay, those are fairly intuitive results thus far. It's each just the original particle in a box wave function plus half of that energy. So each state got pushed up by half of the total height of this slant here. But now we need to calculate the coupling matrix element, the H12. And that is going to end up being two integrals as well, one T two plus one V two. Okay, then we know that the, um, the two uh, eigenfunctions here, this of the original particle in a box, this phi one and phi two, those are orthogonal to each other. And this T, this T acting on state two just gives us four epsilon, which we can factor out. So that gives us four epsilon one, two. And we know these functions are orthogonal to each other. So this whole term is going to end up going to zero. Okay, then for our second element here, we're gonna have that H12 equals the remaining leftover term here which is, again, I'm gonna pull out a square root of two over L from phi one, square root of two over L from phi two, get a two over L. I'm again gonna pull out a factor of V naught over L from my V operator. Integral from zero to L dx, x sine pi x over L. Then this isn't gonna fit on the line, but this is a continuation times 
sine 2 pi x over L. So I didn't fit on the line there, but that's just, this is all multiplied together. Then this integral is going to evaluate out to minus 8 L squared over 9 pi squared. So again, I just put I just stuck that into uh, Wolfram Alpha found Wolfram Alpha found the integral of that, and that's there. You could look up similar integrals from a table if you liked. So we get uh, this first element as we had was zero. So let me just write zero so we see the same type of form here. Then we're going to have this L squared is going to cancel with these two L's on the bottom. You're going to have this 2 multiplied times this 8 give you a 16. So we're going to get, instead of having a plus here, we're actually going to get a minus 16 v naught over 9 pi squared. Okay, and that's our, that's our coupling element there. So we have all three of these. So let's calculate what our first part, h11, plus h22 over 2 is equal to. And that's going to be epsilon plus 4 epsilon over 2 plus v naught over 2 plus v naught over 2 over 2. So that's going to give us 5 halves epsilon plus v naught over 2. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. How about our difference here? Our h11 minus h22 over 2 is going to be epsilon minus 4 epsilon over 2 plus v naught over 2 minus v naught over 2 over 2. It's going to give us 3 halves epsilon, and these two are going to cancel with each other and give us 0. So our final result for our uh, energy of this system here, our energy according to the linear variational method is going to be, this first term here is going to be 5 halves epsilon naught, 5 halves epsilon plus v naught over 2. For the ground state, we pick the lower energy state, and that's going to be the minus sign here. And we're going to have this element squared, which is going to be 3 halves epsilon squared. And then plus our this is actually ends up being minus epsilon, but we minus three halves epsilon. But since it's going to be squared, I can just take the positive value of it. It ends up being the same in either case. And similarly, with the uh, the coupling element being minus 16 v naught over nine pi squared, it's going to get squared. So I can take the positive value of it. 16 v naught over nine pi squared squared. And this is our final result. So what does this say? This says that our energy is going to be 5 halves the energy of the ground state of particle in a box plus half of this slant here. So v naught over 2 is just going to be this half of this distance here, right there, minus um, at least 3 halves epsilon because we're going to square this, then take the square root. So it's going to subtract at least 3 halves epsilon. So that's going to give us, that's going to give us uh, particle in a box ground state energy plus V naught over 2. And then it's going to additionally subtract however much, uh, the, however much this slant is going to be adding to this term here. So the more, the more, uh, this slant goes up, the more we're going to deviate under this this value of particle in a box 
uh, ground state wave en function energy uh, plus V naught over 2. So this is, uh, keep this in mind, what the solution is to this case, because we're going to look at this same uh, case for perturbation theory uh, later and see what perturbation theory predicts for this exact system. And we'll see that that perturbation theory actually predicts a higher energy, but we know that the real solution has to be lower in energy because we get this, we get this energy with this trial function here, and for variational methods, any any trial wave function we get has to give an energy which is higher than the true ground state energy. So the true energy has to be lower than this. This is going to be an upper bound on what the ground state, this, the lowest energy uh, wave function's uh, state is going to be. And we should also notice that if we set V equal to zero, what we'll recover is just epsilon. We'll recover the ground state particle in a box energy. So uh, we can kind of tune whatever uh, value of energy we're going to get by whatever this value of V is and it's going to deviate more and more from V naught over 2 as as the value of V gets higher and higher.